the name Mark Anthony Isaac from New Orleans, Louisiana. As a teenager, it was kind of, you know, I ain't gonna say rough, but it was kind of bad. I was young and I wound up going in the wrong direction. And, you know what I'm saying? Start getting, you know, thing that I supposed to got into. You know what I'm saying? So. My name's Steve Wozni. I'm a second year associate at Schiff Hardin, um, which is a multi-service firm. We're based out of Chicago. I was assigned to work with um, Mark Isaac with uh, a team in New York um, with uh, the help of a partner, Kayvon Sandegi and um, another associate, Matt Barakalo. Um, Kayvon and I were working on Mark's case and he uh, had been in, incarcerated in Angola uh, in the Louisiana State Penitentiary. Uh, he ser was serving a life sentence on a second degree murder charge. Um, Ten jurors had voted him guilty after his trial. Um, two voted that he was not guilty. Under Louisiana law at the time, he was still convicted. It's, 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 it's a one man cell. Doing a lot of, you know, one hour of recreation, they do 23 hours of sales. When they come out, you go in the yard for an hour, come back, take a shower, go back in the cell. We worked with um, the Promise of Justice Initiative, uh, PGI, to submit an application for post conviction relief. Um, and we were very fortunate that while the application was pending, um, a new DA was elected in Orleans Parish where Mark was convicted and uh, the district attorney had expressed his willingness to, to back applications from individuals like Mark who were convicted by non-unanimous juries and so with the DA support uh, the court ultimately agreed to to vacate Mark's conviction and uh, granted him a new trial which then allowed PGI to step in and enter into plea negotiations um, on Mark's behalf. And ultimately, uh, Mark agreed to plead guilty to a diminished charge to a, to a manslaughter uh, offense. And he accepted uh, a corresponding sentence that, that allowed him to be released on time served. At the end of March um, of this year, Mark was released after serving, I think it was 28 years uh, in Angola. Last time, I was out not come back and and I'm my brother, you know what I'm saying? So, so I come down here, and my cousin, Sam, my cousin, I got me a job and, and got me a car. I work in my house now, so like I said, I'm all the world. I've been blessed. I'm staying positive. Yeah. The organization, the people, mean the world to me. I can never get it. It will live, it will live with me to the day I die. Because I can't forget the people who put problems and justice made it, made it possible to be where I'm at. So I'm going to be all, I'm going to always be a part of the problem of justice. And the laws to people is law to me. So. Even though I, I played a, a small role in this whole process, you know, it's it's had an enormous impact on me. I mean, it's in my experience as a young lawyer, it's rare to have opportunities where your work so directly impacts somebody's life, and especially to this extent. Um, and I know it's something that I'll I'll cherish throughout my career. I'm just thankful that, that the opportunity was extended to me, and and it was encouraged by my firm. I'm thankful for all of PGA's PGI's guidance and leadership throughout. Um, and I'm thankful that I had the opportunity to, to meet Mark and to help him and uh, become his friend. And my favorite part of the project was, I, I, I guess, most simply was Mark being released. Of course, I appreciate that that is not the result that, that everybody gets in these cases and, and people put so much work into this just knowing that. And so to, to have that be the conclusion was of course, you know, fantastic. But, now, like looking at it broader, I mean, my, my favorite part is just that Mark stays in touch, you know, that, that he, he calls me and he lets me know how he's doing and he's always cheerful and, and thankful to, despite everything he's been through. They're my friends for life and I keep in touch with them. I talk to them not every day, but every now and then I call him to see. To know that he wants to let me know how he's doing and he sees me as a part of his life now, it, it, it means a lot. It was awesome. 
was amazing to meet them kind of people. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, that was understandable. I will always cherish the people that helped me out my freedom. I get all the glory to God because if it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be here. So, y'all pray to y'all and come home. Give them another chance. You know what I'm saying? Give an opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, to do the right thing. And that's what I'm doing. I think all of y'all, from the bottom of my heart.